All right, so let's practice finding our aperture and our field stops with um, the thin lens equation. So using our uh, analytical, not using the graphical method. And we're also gonna practice finding out where the entrance and exit pupil is, okay? Um, and like we said, the entrance pupil is useful for finding the F, sorry, the exit pupil is useful for finding the F number, which is a very important quantity for imaging systems. So, um, great. So uh, we need to figure out where the aperture stop is with this system. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, briefly use the graphical method just uh, to um, figure this out. Um, and we're gonna estimate the graphical method. So if you'll notice, um, that the, uh, so if we draw, let's use, let's use red. So if we draw um, some rays leaving our point source here at the top on the left, traveling through our, our first lens, what we find out is that, um, for example, if, uh, on the top here, this ray, is, is not really affected by the um, aperture stop there. But if we look at the bottom, what we find out is this ray is indeed affected by this stop. So the, the first lens, even though it's the same diameter as our aperture stop, sorry, um, the aperture stop is has a diameter of 12 millimeters. It has a radius of six millimeters and the first lens has a diameter of 12 millimeters. Um, when we start looking at objects that are off the optical axis, the, um, the stop here um, is what actually ends up uh, limiting the amount of light. So that is going to be our aperture stop. Great. So if we draw now um, rays going through our, our system, what we see is that if we draw the ones that actually make it through, they're all focused onto our camera. Cool. So um, we've decided that our, our stop aperture stop is the stop that was built into the system, which is makes sense because if we put a stop there, it, it better be because it's the aperture stop. And now we want to figure out, um, let's use a thin lens equation to find uh, the image of the aperture stop um, as seen from the object. And that's gonna be called the entrance pupil. So um, for this, we have a HO, a height of six millimeters, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our aperture stop and we're gonna take the edge of it. And we're gonna project that in this direction through our imaging system and figure out where the image is, okay? Um, so we're going in the opposite direction we normally do when we're we're using the thin lens equation. Uh, so um, we have to keep in mind that when we're gonna end up flipping all of our sign conventions, right? So uh, HO is equal to, in this case, six millimeters. Um, so HO is equal to six millimeters. In this case, to our SO, the distance of our aperture stop from our first lens is 45 millimeters. That's right there. And our focal length is equal to 75 millimeters. It's a positive focal length lens. So if we use our thin lens equation, um, in this case, all of our entries are positive. And if we solve for our SI, we get that our SI is equal to negative 112.5 millimeters. So our image of our aperture stop through our first lens is gonna be located and it's negative 112.5 millimeters. So it's on the same side of the lens as our object. So that's gonna be just after the second lens in this plane right here, denoted with yellow. But we need to figure out how wide our aperture stop is. 
So we're going to now calculate our magnification and use that magnification to figure out the height of this point that's on the edge of our um, aperture stop. So our magnification, we don't yell this terrible. Magnification is equal to, um, in this case, well, always SI over SO. So it's equal to negative 2.5 in this case, sorry, positive 2.5. We have two negatives. Um, so if we plug in for our HO is six millimeters. So six millimeters times 2.5 gives us 15 millimeters is our H I is 15 millimeters. So this point on our aperture stop is transmit translated to 15 millimeters. So roughly here, I guess. So our entrance pupil looks something like this. Pupil. Great. Now we got to try to calculate our exit pupil. And our exit pupil is the image of our aperture stop projected towards our image. All right. So to do that, we have our HO again is six millimeters because we're still trying to figure out where the image of this edge of our aperture is right there. Our SO in this case is 50 millimeters because our aperture stop is 50 millimeters from our second lens. Our focal length is equal to 200 millimeters. Now you'll note that our object is closer to our lens than our focal length. So this is gonna produce a imaginary image. It's gonna produce a negative image, just like for the first, uh, first lens. So one over F, is equal to one over SI plus one over SO. And um, that gives us an SI is equal to negative 66 millimeters. Great. And our magnification is equal to, um, in that case, 1.32, which gives us an HI of 7.92 millimeters. So SI is negative, it's on the same side of the lens as our object just a little bit farther away. So it's gonna occur in this plane right here. And it's going to be just slightly bigger than our other aperture. So it looks something like this. So if we were to put an eye on our camera and look, through our optical system, we would see an image of our of this aperture stop right here, and it would look like it was right here, um, 66 millimeters away from the second lens, and um, a little bit wider than the actual ap aperture stop. It would look like it was 7.92 millimeters wide. Great. So if we were to calculate the f number of this system, just to look ahead, we're going to go into this in more detail. The F number is equal to F over D. In this case, our distance in this case is 100 plus 66 millimeters. And our diameter is going to be two times 7.92 millimeters. So if we were to calculate our F number, we get um, 166 divided by two divided by 7.92 gives us an F number of 10.4, 10.5, which is moderately slow. So what we would call a slow lens, 10.5. Okay. So here we've found our entrance pupil and our exit pupil. Our exit, or sorry, entrance pupil and our exit pupil. I got to label our exit pupil here. So our exit pupil is useful for determining our F number. It turns out our entrance pupil is really useful because that is the, the, the point at which um, it appears that all of our rays um, rotate around each other. So, um, if you were to 
move this object up and down, um, it looks as though all of the rays pivot about this point on the entrance pupil. And that's useful for people who take, for example, panoramic photos, uh, because you want to pivot your camera around this point in order to make sure that you get no distortion as you move your camera around. Um, for the record, that was a lot more important 15, 20 years ago. Nowadays, a lot of cameras are able to actually determine the distance that you're... So when you take a panorama with your um, phone, right, on your, your camera on your phone, um, you don't rotate it around the entrance pupil. You rotate it around your center of mass pretty much because you just sit there and rotate your body as you take or you move it up and down. Um, but you're, set, you're, you're, you're rotating around you as opposed to the camera itself. Um, ideally, you would sit there and twist that camera right around its lens. So its lens is, is staying in the exact same position in space. Um, but that's not what's happening. You're not rotating it around its entrance pupil. So it does a lot of soft, um, comp not complicated, it's actually not that complicated, but it is a lot of um, computational work to determine what that distance is, how far away you're rotating from the entrance pupil, and then it does um, some transformations on your image in order to make sure they all stitch together correctly. So it, it removes those um, uh, flaws in the image for you. Okay, now we gotta figure out what the field stop is. And um, again, this is pretty obvious, but our field stop is gonna be, um, if, we move our, if we move our object a little bit higher up, it will fall off the edge of our camera and it will no longer be imaged before it gets blocked by anything else in our optical system. So our field stop is again our camera. Um, and I remember our field stop is the stop that limits the positions of imaged objects. Um, so one way to figure out what your field of view is, quote unquote, is to project your camera back through your system to figure out what your um, what, for example, the image at the edge of your camera, wh where it would show up um, over here. Uh, and the reason is, is because uh, uh, it, um, optical si systems are uh, reversible. So if you, the image of the corner of your camera over here is gonna be the same as the image of an object located at that point right here. So they're um, equivalent, if you will. Cool, so if we do that calculation, um, a height of our camera is five millimeters. SO is equal to uh, 100 millimeters because our, our object is 100 millimeters to the right of our lens. And our focal length is equal to 200 millimeters. And SI is equal to, then if we solve our thin lens equation, um, 1 over 1 over F minus 1 over SO, which is equal to negative 200 millimeters. Um, so then that's great. We just plug that into our magnification equation. Our magnification M1 is equal to negative SI over SO is equal to negative 200 negative over 100 millimeters, which gives us 2 as our magnification. And that tells us that our HI, height of our image, is equal to 10 millimeters. So our, our, um, our image is negative, SI is negative, so it occurs on the same side of our lens as our object, um, and it occurs 200 millimeters away, and it has a height of 10 millimeters. So if we come back up here and draw that, the image of this, this point on our camera, I'm going to draw it in blue, well, that point on our camera is going to occur somewhere twice as far away from the lens and twice as far away from the optical axis. So it's roughly right here. So this is I1 of our camera. Great, so now that becomes our new object for our second lens, which has a focal length of 75 millimeters. And it is now located 200 plus 95 millimeters away. So 295 millimeters away. So let's write that stuff down. HO now is equal to 10 millimeters. SO is equal to 295 millimeters. F is equal to 75 millimeters. 
Now our SO is larger than our focal length, so this is going to produce a real image. And indeed, SI, if we solve for it, which is equal to 1 over 1 over F minus 1 over SO. And remember, all I've done here and here is just solve that thin lens equation for our SI. If we plug in everything we need, we find out that our SI is equal to 100.5. Millimeters, which is exactly what we would expect. Um, 100 millimeters basically past this lens here, which is right where we put our object, which is what we would hope. It's exactly what we would hope. And then we got to figure out the height. Now, the height comes from our magnification. Our mag M2 is equal to um, negative SI over SO, which is equal to negative 100.5 millimeters divided by 295 millimeters. So that's equal to 0 0.34, negative 0 0.34. So our HI, the height of our image, ultimately the height of the image of the corner of our camera sensor is equal to 3.4 millimeters. So our field of view is 3.4 millimeters. So that tells us that 3.4 millimeters is as far as we can see, because anything past farther away from our optical axis than 3.4 millimeters will fall off the edge of our camera. Great. All right. Um, we're going to pause the video, stop it here, and we're going to um, then talk about the F number in more detail, which is uh, relates to the speed of a lens.